everybody and welcome back to CLC Online. My name is Leanne and I'm your online host this Sunday. Uh, it's so good to have you here and remember guys, tell us where you're tuning in from. Last week was amazing because some of you were telling me you're in Nottingham, you're in Newcastle and that was so exciting. So this week I have my phone, I'll be checking, just say hi or if you need prayers or anything just let us know. So to start us off, I will be reading the verse of the day from the Bible app. And you know CLC is on the Bible app. Our guests will tell us more about that. But for now, the verse of the day says, Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. So today in the studio, we have our online pastors, Kevin and Lean. Welcome, guys. Good morning. It's morning. always good to nice have to be you. Here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Yeah, How are you we're feeling? Good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're yeah. Not bad good. at all. Yeah. Not Thank bad you. at all. And yeah. I understand that yesterday you couldn't be with us for our Convergence Conference. Yeah. Mm. We had a conference here, guys. It was amazing oh. and you guys kind of missed out no. why no. <laughs> why oh. well we were we were um in a, in the hub in wording we were yeah. doing a uh, vision day and you know helping people to discover to, to yeah. discover their vision and how they can get to the goals and yeah and so, so was it like a whole day thing a whole day yeah mm. so okay. it was 10 till mm. 4. oh that's amazing so was there food or were you guys oh yes it did. depends no yeah. i did homemade <laughs> yeah, soup homemade for them soup. oh that's so amazing there we go with a roll or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of food and fasting everybody do you know what today <laughs> is <laughs> the fast is Last day. Day. <laughs> we made it we made it we some made of us it. almost never made it mm. i won't name names <laughs> but we made it and we're glad for yeah. that. Yeah. And how has yeah. your week been? Anything interesting been happening at the Hub? I, I think um, our whole week's been yeah. one of just reflection. I think mm. it, when, you, when you do the fast and everything else, yeah. you, it's about thinking about things, isn't it? What the future's going to hold. Mm. And um, I just think it's been great. I mean, I love the yeah. more early morning Early morning seven o'clock yeah. how many people are turning <laughs> up i was Good, amazed it? yeah, it's brilliant isn't it it's people were turning up in their pajamas some were still yeah. in bed right <laughs> <laughs> and some, i was like it's and not some just were me. not putting their video on were yeah, they? yeah yeah there you go. <laughs> if i if i had not put my video on the truth is i would have been sleeping because <laughs> you just go back to sleep and you're like amen sleep, sleep. Yeah. amen <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. And what about the prayer today we had in the morning? Yeah, powerful. Mm, that yeah. was lovely. Yeah. 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 First yeah. time, well, second time we've made the, yeah. obviously, because coming from Werben, we have to leave it Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll be but going we on YouTube. nice and early this morning. Really so we thought, right, we can do it. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and could, could you share with us the word you shared in the prayer? Because mm. the online guys were not there, but he yeah. shared a really powerful word, which I oh. think everyone could benefit from. Mm. Mm. I, just, I just saw, mm -hmm. like, um, uh, ashes and underneath the ashes were like little embers mm -hmm. and it was like you know you may feel like you lost all your giftings and everything it's something in that area mm -hmm. it's funny when yeah. you deliver a word you can never repeat <laughs> yeah, word for word no, <laughs> no. Uh, and uh, it was like uh, oh, wait for today wait yeah. for a breath of uh, wind from, from god, god to mm. reignite to reignite those embers into mm. flames and i and i just and I just felt that's what's going to happen today. Yes. There's yes. going to be people that are going to be really yeah. affected by the words yeah. that are said in the service. And it's amazing because you two were not there yesterday, no. but that's something that has been spoken on as oh, well, okay. oh. about moving from futility, is that how you say the word? Futility, yeah, yeah to being fruitful. Because okay. a lot of people were feeling, you know, hopeless, like, oh, what's the point of anything? And they just prayed on that. Mm -hmm. And so when you shared that word in the morning, I was like, mm -mm, Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is up to something. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was interesting yeah. because when you shared that this morning, I didn't really have time to, to come back, but mm -hmm, I've been mm -hmm. thinking about it. It's like, you know, when people have words spoken over them, yeah. um, like negative words and what have you, they say can't do anything and they can't do that and what have you, and then they believe that. Yeah. And I felt sometimes that could be like the ashes, yeah, someone's put the ashes yeah. onto that. And covered But God's going to come along mm. and say, do you know what, mm. you, they say you can't do it, but God says uh, you can do it. Amen. And I think that's, you know, that to me was and like... And that's interesting because when the flames catch flame, mm -hmm. mm. the ashes, that's what I said this morning, wasn't it? That just the just ashes yeah, go up in the air and then sort of go. Thing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. And you've got the beautiful flames and the fire. It's amazing. Mm. Yeah. Honestly, I am more excited for today now yeah. because mm. when we were praying, the words that just kept coming in were confirmation of each other. Mm. And That's guess right. who we have today preaching with us? We have Simon Breaker. Wow. He was at the convergence yesterday. Mm. He's back today. He carries the presence. Have you ever mm. met people that 
when they walk it's just like the presence of the lord <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's exactly who simon yeah. is and i hope you guys online are excited mm, yeah. you know um remember i'm trying to see the comments but for some reason it's not showing after service mm -hmm. we'll go through them yeah because I, I know people are talking i just can't see it guys no. technology no. <laughs> so make sure you chat to <laughs> us because yeah. we're going to yeah. be there aren't that's we today yeah. we're going to be online kevin and myself and, yeah. and invite others yeah. Yeah. Invite, that's right and, definitely. and you mentioned about the app yes and the bible know, app there's 118 now friends on the app yeah that's, that's brilliant. and we're doing daily plans together okay and how uh, do people join um, where well they can use the QR code or they can mm -hmm. go onto the U version and search for your church and then it would be City Life Church and it would come up okay. and then they can, press, they can press that. Then they join. And then they can just and join with it. us and they can that's come it. in. Fantastic. Join us with the notes, join us with the uh, yeah. Bible plans yeah. mm. and, uh, and just it's connect easy. with each other. Yeah, mm. it's about that's community. That's yeah. what I was just going to say yeah. that actually. It becomes a community then, doesn't it? And the that's verse right. we read today about not forsaking meeting that's together. Right, yeah. Like For any reason, if you cannot come to physical church, there's always online. And mm. these are our online pastors. Yeah. And if you need prayer, how does someone tell you all they need prayer? Uh, when <laughs> usually what happens is uh, they would say, we, we, would, we would like prayer. So what we do is we put up an email address there. Okay. And mm. then they can email us their prayers and... I can guarantee to you they will be yeah. uh, dealt with and prayed, right. and prayed yeah. about. And okay. uh, yeah, if so they're quite happy for us to pray for them there and then, yeah. Yeah. then, then sometimes we put a prayer on, a, like a general prayer for them and, yeah. and just okay. know that we're praying for them also personally. That's yeah. beautiful ourselves. to know there's actual people praying for mm. you. Yeah. So remember guys, if you need prayers, just you can pop in the comment section first of all, yeah. or mm. email, Definitely. and there's people ready to pray for you. This yes. is a community. It's all about love, yeah. and it's so exciting. And now guys, we are getting ready to go into I'm the excited, service. I am excited. Yeah. We have I'm Alan on the worship person. team. Um, tell us in the comment section, you know, what your favorite worship song is. And yeah, I'll see you after the service, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Bye. and goodbye. And there were two things that happened that well, a couple of things that happened that I never thought I would get to do. One of them was put on a mask and go into a bank. <laughs> that was just a unique experience. I just felt like I needed to sort of go in there stealth. The other thing I realized is you could walk around the supermarket pulling stupid faces at people and they were oblivious. <laughs> I was out in one of our villages. I, was, I, I like to go fishing. Um, just to get out in the countryside and I go into this little co-op and I'm walking around the co-op and, and I turn around and there's an old fella behind me walking around the co-op with a pair of underpants on his head as a mask and his eyes were coming out of the holes in the legs and I just turned around and looked at him and thought, nobody prophesied that. <laughs> The other thing I saw, I saw what it looks like to make a single pretzel last 10 hours on a plane. Because as long as you were eating, you didn't need to make a mask and you'd get up to go to the toilet and you'd see people just with a single pretzel hanging out there. And I think it brought out every rebellious, independent thing. Oh, where we lived in Leicester, Leicester was the city that got locked down first, you know because um, we're naughty and, and where our house is you could literally take a five minute walk and there was this invisible line and our children they go look dad I'm alive dad I'm alive <laughs> and it's just a very strange strange world so it's good to kind of get to see people not in boxes when we had our first conference after lockdown I wondered if we needed to actually distribute boxes for people who were feeling a little insecure with just a bit of car hole cut in it just so we could pamper to that. We saw the most bizarre stuff. My dear, one of my dear friends, um, I did an interview with him. We are all getting to grips with Zoom and all the technology. And I did this interview with him. And, and he's a, a Nigerian brother, wonderful man of God. But he sat in front of a window. He looked like he was on a witness protection program. <laughs> you just couldn't see him. And, and then we had situations where in a pastor's prayer meeting, everybody stood up to pray. And for the next 15 minutes, all we could see was everybody's groin area because they hadn't lifted it. It's just like, this is just a weird moment. 
this is a weird moment. And, and, and I, I look at it and I go, Lord, you're just funny. <laughs> you're just funny that, 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 that we kind of, you allow us to go through these seasons. And, it, and in it all, I'm kind of like, let me just catch what it is that you want us to catch in this moment. And, and, and there's probably lots of things that you could pull from it. And it, I think the one thing above everything else was this. The church is a people. It was never a meeting. And we just had the delight, and it really was a delight, of actually connecting with people around the world. We, we, we saw people connect with us from, from, from all kinds of weird and wonderful places just because of the fact that that digital world opened up and, and we connected to somebody in the United States and this December just gone, we were with them, ministering with them as a result of them just connecting with us on social media. Incidentally, if, the, if you want to catch me, that's the place to go, Facebook. Just search my name, you'll find us there and we post lots of stuff there and we just saw so many beautiful things happen. One live stream, I, I, I just said, you know, just be God where you are. The church can't be closed. Because it's not a meeting. And this guy just took that to heart. And he was a musician. And he just said, Lord, how can I bless my community? And, and he decided, I'm going to stand in my front garden. And in his village, every morning he got up. This guy from all nations. Every morning he got up, went to his front garden, and led worship from his lawn. And just played to, to his community. And connected to his community. We are just... Um, over that time just did broadcasts in the morning and the evening on li live streams on Facebook and I'm walking around the supermarket afterwards people coming up to me saying thank you so much for your words of encouragement it got me through and so often you can miss the little things never underestimate one small decision and we're there in um, in the US we've Connected with a dear friend over there now, and uh, we went there in, in December, so November, sorry, to do uh, a training time with them. And uh, she's got a beautiful log cabin in the middle of the forest, and it's just a lovely place to go. And my wife's sighing because it's just this, it's, you know, there are places you kind of go to, and you kind of go, I need to leave as quickly as possible. IKEA is one of those places. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you could, I mean, if you really, if you're ever feeling slightly depressed and you need to be encouraged, get a deck chair and sit next to where people load their cars at IKEA. And you discover the total lack of space awareness that people have. <laughs> that they have a five foot car and a 20 foot table. We actually saw somebody with a, with a sofa coming to a mini. And they're walking towards the mini with the sofa. And I'm looking at them going, can you not, really, can you not connect the dots? It's just an entertaining place to be. But um, that was a little, I had, that's in my notes, incidentally. I was going to say that. Um, but in, um, in, you arrive in, uh, in, in this place and there's just such a sense of peace. And, 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 and the place is saturated with the presence of God. They just pray there constantly. They've got a cabin that's just dedicated for people to just come and stay and pray. And um, during the, um, the ministry time, there's around about 30-odd people. And I, I, I prophesy over people because I believe God loves them. I believe God just wants to tell people why they're awesome. Have you ever done that? Have you ever just sort of spent a moment where you've just kind of sat and said, Lord, why am I awesome? Have you ever asked him that? Because he wants to tell you, you know. He is absolutely head over heels in love with you. He's just fascinated by you. Nobody believes that, apparently. But he really, he really, really, really is. I remember there's one occasion. I've now got three stories running at the same time. Um, I'll land one of them. But we were, in, uh, we were in the city. We were doing an event in Leicester. And we came out. And as we were coming out um, of this church, and they've got, I would joke with them, they were at the Redeemed Church. And I joke with my brothers at the Redeemed Church. I say to them, I think I'm going to open a cupboard door in my kitchen and find a church plant there. 
because they just plant churches everywhere. And, and this church is down a little corridor in, in part of the city. And we came out at about 11 o'clock at night. And these two girls were walking past. It was about, it was late on a Saturday. And they'd forgotten to get dressed that night as they were walking past. And, and, um, and they kind of came to the door and, um, and they go, oh, is this another pub? And we go, no, it's not a pub, it's a church. And this young lass, she says, goes, oh, my grandma died. And it was interesting that she felt she could say that there. And I looked at her and said, I'm so sorry about that. Would you like us to pray with you? And she went, I would. I said, well, why don't you come in? And we started walking into the church. And then they realized that they weren't in their church outfit. <laughs> and and um, I gave her my jacket. And uh, we, got, we, we stood at the front of the church. And we started to pray. And, and God said to me, I want you to ask her, say, do you know why you dress the way you do? And I said, no, Lord, I'm not going to say that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got different prophets in the Bible. You've got, you know, you've got Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Well, I'm Simon, the reluctant one. And <laughs> we were walking for a food court, and as I'm walking past these t- ladies at the table, the Lord gives me a word, and I just carried on walking. <laughs> and my daughter looks at me, she said, Daddy. I said, yes. She said, You've got a prophetic word for those girls at that table, haven't you? I said, how do you know this? And she said, because you're doing the walk. I said, what do you mean I'm doing the walk? She says, well, if you're out on the streets and God gives you a prophetic word, you walk quickly away from the person. (laughs) Why do I tell you this? Because you know what? There's no superstars in the kingdom. And actually, you'll be more liberated by us sharing our weaknesses than you will be by us telling you our successes. Because then you go, oh, we're all the same. Are you hearing me? And so well, there we are, we're in America, and, um, and, and there's this guy there. Nobody really knew who he was. But you know if you're going to practice sharing God with somebody, this was not the person. They're like, really very angry. Just look at the person next to you say, are you that? No, don't do that. Um, <laughs> so, so anyway, I, I, when, it, when, the, um, when we finished, I just felt like, I'm going to prophesy over this guy. I went over to him. And I, I, I prophesied over him, and he started to cry. There was nothing about his face that said he wanted to be prayed for or prophesied to. And, and God touched his life. We get back to England, and about a week later, we get a message from our friend in the U.S., Rebecca. And she said, that guy you prophesied over, he came to the meeting desperate at the point of committing suicide. And it was almost like that was his last chance, that he was just going to try one more time. And his words to me in message was this. That one moment totally changed the trajectory of my life. We can be that influence in people's lives. And it's not because we're so bold or we're so well-equipped or we're so squeaky and professional but it, it's because of the one that we serve and the one that we serve loves people. So this, this young girl, she, I, I finally sort of say to her, say, do you know why you dress the way you do? And she, she, her, her eyes dropped and she said, not really. And the Lord said to me, the reason why she dresses that way is because she doesn't really think she's worth anything. And she feels the need to try and sell herself. And I said this to her, and she burst into tears. And we prayed over her. And she got connected into church. See, 1 Corinthians 14 says this. Follow the way of love. Eagerly desire to be spiritual, especially prophecy. Why does God connect love and prophecy together? Well, the reason why is because 
We cannot love people the way that God loves people if we don't see people the way that he sees them. And that is what it is all about. It is about that. I mean, if you have a kind of, you kind of get through, like, you know, you, you go through the motions of, of going to church and, and doing, doing this stuff. Have you ever kind of just gone, what is this all about? Why do we do this stuff? We led a church for several years, and uh, it was connected with, with Kingdom Faith. It was led by Colin Urquhart. And we came through that stream. Some of you might know him, some of you might not. But different streams have different styles of worship and different ways. And in Kingdom Faith, the way the worship would start is everybody would just start to sing in tongues and just speak out before the worship team started. And the reason for that is because Colin would say, I want you personally to connect with God. So I don't want you to sing somebody else's song, but I want you to connect with God. And that was the reason for it. So, and, it, and it worked really well. When we took our church, our church did that. And I looked at the congregation this one day. And they're like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Caravan was served today. And, and they're just like walking around. I'm thinking, what? And I said to them, I said, why do we do that at the beginning? And, and they all kind of went, well, it's because we've kind of always done it, really. Nobody really told us. I mean, it's like changing the clocks every year. Put your hand up if you're a farmer. <laughs> Our whole society's changed, but we're still doing stuff that belong to a season that really isn't relevant any longer. And we need to sometimes just rewind a little bit and go, why do we do what we do? I mean, why do we gather together? What's the point? I mean, why? Why sit in rows? I was with Clive Irk at Kingdom Faith. I turned up to a leaders' conference, and he'd put tables, and all the chairs were in circles. And everybody's sitting around tables. And he came up to me and said, what do you think? I said, Clive, we're going to have a problem, mate. And he goes, why? I said, well, the Holy Spirit's been going in rows for nearly 2,000 years. <laughs> he's he's going to come and he's going to go, what do I do? <laughs> but sometimes, do you not feel like sometimes you just need to just kind of do a little bit of a defrag and kind of just go, let's just remind myself what this is about. And it's about loving people. Really is what it's about. Daniel read that text this morning, Psalm 133. Those are, there are verses in the Bible that sometimes pastors think are put there. Not that, I'm not talking about Daniel now. But you know, it's like wherever any two or three gather together in his name. Jesus is there. This is the verse that leaders pull up when they're disappointed by the numbers of, of attending. <laughs> Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Do you know that that word there, unity, if you, if you go into the ancient Hebrew dictionary, just to say, if you want to look intelligent when you're preaching, quote the Hebrew word. Might not be relevant, but people will just go, ooh. <laughs> On this occasion, it actually is relevant. But what it means, this word there, unity, most Hebrew words, they carry a pictorial element to them. They're not like, it's not like the, the, the Cyrillic languages, the Greek languages. But Hebrew language, it's made from pictures and the language did, but, but progressed through time. So when something is said, it's also, there's, there's, there's meaning mixed in with the statement. So when you talk about the fear of the Lord... It literally, the meaning mixed in with it is to throw yourself to the ground as rain throws itself to the ground in a storm. That has a little bit of a different feel to it, doesn't it? It makes it more colourful. So in this, when it says, when brethren dwell together in unity, what it literally means, when two sides come together, they produce a cutting edge. That's what it literally means. It means for two sides to come together that produce a cutting edge. I used to be a butcher. There are times in my life that I feel that I still am. <laughs> the difference from when I was a butcher and when I'm in ministry is at least the meat stayed on the block. The problem with the church is sometimes they get back up and walk off. <laughs> it's like, no, I want to keep my flesh. 
<laughs> um, but, but one of the things you learn, I mean, butchering, you, we would start our day. Every day we knew that you were more likely to cut yourself with a blunt knife than you were likely to cut yourself with a sharp one. Ecclesiastes 10.10 says this, If the axe is dull, it's hard work. Wise is the man who sharpens the axe. So often what happens in the church is we've not quite got that cutting edge, that understanding that we need to have. So the answer, if something's not working, God's doing a new thing. What that means is do the old thing with more enthusiasm. (laughs) And it doesn't last because I said, yes, it's a new thing. Hold on, didn't we do this last week? And actually, this cutting edge, when, when I'd be sharpening that knife, I didn't just sharpen it go, why are you sharpening your knife? I just need a sharp knife. I like a sharp knife. But I've got that knife because I'm sharpening it with the intention of a purpose. Say purpose. See, a knife that doesn't have a purpose is just an ornament. And unity without purpose is just an ornament. It's just a lullaby. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together. Why we all hide inside the church. <laughs> but actually what God wants to do is, is to bring together those cutting edges so that we have a clear defined purpose, that we know what our business is. Amen? Hello? Just poke the person next to you, see if they've died while I've been preaching. (laughs) I was preaching in our church in Leicester a a Sunday ago, and I was joking with the congregation. There was quite a lot of young people in the room, and I made this sort of joke statement. Just slap the person next to you and see if they forgive you. Never say this when there are young people in the room. (laughs) And I hear this. I'm like, what the heck? And it was my son slapping somebody in church. So just be careful what you say. (laughs) So we go through, Ephesians 3.10 says this. We're told this cutting edge, this coming together, this joining together, the reason you're in the room, the reason you got saved, the reason God got a hold of you, Paul tells us what it is. In Ephesians 3.10, he says what the purpose of the church actually is. And he says this, his intent was that now people would sit in rows. It's not what it says. His intent was that now everybody would come forward, stand in rows, make sure there's nobody behind them, and then gracefully fall over. That's not in there. His intent was that now you should have smoke machines. I love smoke machines. I think they're great. My friend, is <laughs> Kingdom Faith, he's leading worship at a ladies' event, and he sat at the back because he wasn't a lady and just didn't really want to sit in the meeting. And he sat behind the stage, and he notices this switch on the floor. And he's bored, so he's just going, click, 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 unbeknown to him. Each time he clicked the button, it turned the smoke machine on the stage. (laughs) I used to be a goth. This was normal territory for me, for there to be a wave of dry ice sweeping through the room. And as the speaker's speaking, the dry ice in the back of the room were gradually coming up higher and higher and higher to the point that all you could see was just a a figure in the midst and he's in the back going click, 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 (laughs) click. And you, sometimes you look at what goes on in the church and it's just so funny. Don't you think? I was in India, ministering in India, and uh, we go off into the mud hut that we're, where we were eating. And, um, and they say to us, are you hot? And I wanted to say, it's India, of course. <laughs> and, and I say, yeah, it is pretty hot. And he says, we'll put the fan on for you. And he goes off and he comes back with a metal spoon. I'm thinking, what is he going to do with the metal spoon? And then he takes this wire, naked, two naked wires, holds it in front of the plug and starts sticking the wires into the the plug and the fan starts working. But over the next 
couple of days, they're banging pieces of polystyrene box while they're praising the Lord, waving sticks, and while they're doing it, tumors are falling off of people, blind eyes are being opened, and people are being set free. See, the thing is, is this, the church is business, the church's business is Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's not get hung up on structures or lack of structures or whether you stand up, whether you sit down, whether you sing three fast songs, two slow songs. The worship broke out at Convergence this year in November. The last session was the moment that God broke out. And it broke out while I was mumbling under my voice, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And we did all of these other huge songs and God just broke out there. Why? He wants to have fun. Why? He wants to have fun. Okay. What's near on phone? He wants to have fun. What's near He wants to have fun. Oh, I'm glad you did that because I would have carried on. So it says Ephesians 3.10, his intent was that through the church, say, that's me. Wow. His intent was that through the church, the multifaceted wisdom of God should be demonstrated to rulers and principalities. That'll change your worldview a little bit. There's three guys, and they're on a building site. And this guy walks up and says to the first guy, what are you doing? He says, I'm just piling up these bricks here. He comes to the second guy, he says, what are you doing? He says, I'm just, I'm building this wall. He goes to the third guy, he says, what are you doing? He says, I'm building a location where people are going to gather in the presence of God and their lives are going to be transformed. They're going to receive revelation from heaven and then they're going to be sent to the nations and bring transformation. All three of them were doing the same job. Only one of them had the right perspective. See, it's not what you're doing, but it's the perspective of why you're doing it. See, God wants the church to awaken to her full impact in society. The small things that you do make more difference than you think. Hello? A dear friend of mine ministers in Africa a lot, and he met a man who leads a huge church. And before this man was a Christian, he did bad stuff. He was actually a witch doctor and people literally paid him money to kill people. And he would, I mean, for Western world, we kind of go, is that even real? But he would cast spells. People would come, they'd pay him money and he would cast spells and it would cause problems in families when he did it. And he, he actually owned a motel and this one night he was trying to do his EBGB wobble wobble stuff. This is the Hebrew word for witchcraft. <laughs> just some people go, oh, okay. I'll just like that. <laughs> Could you spell that, please? <laughs> and it didn't work. And he's like, why isn't it working? And then the following night, it didn't work. So he got up and he walked around the motel to try and figure out why the spiritual atmosphere in the hotel had changed. And he walked past a bedroom that had got an open window and there's a young girl sitting on the end of her bed having a devotional time. She wasn't speaking to principalities and powers and doing what we call high level spiritual warfare. She was simply spending her time with Jesus. And her simple practice of reading her word and loving God was affecting the atmosphere where she lived. 
See, one person can make a difference. And that one person is you if you have the correct perspective of who God has called you to be and what God has called you to do. How many of you believe it's possible for one family in a street to affect the spiritual atmosphere of that street negatively? We had it on our street. We had somebody that lived directly across the road from us and they were dealing drugs. And it totally changed the atmosphere of the street. They got moved out of the area. There hasn't been a problem since. We've seen what the devil can do. What if we began to believe that our simple practices of faith, that we begin to just demonstrate Jesus Christ? Because when it says that if through the church, the multifaceted wisdom of God should be demonstrated. Did you know that, that the wisdom of God, according to the book of Corinthians, that Christ is the wisdom and the power of God. So what you simply do is reveal Jesus to your community. That's all you need to do. You don't need to cry and twist somebody's arm up their back. We're not called to make converts. We're called to make disciples and somebody follows something because they see value in it. If they're one to a message, they're vulnerable to a different one. If they're invited into a relationship, they'll never leave because there's not a better one. Amen? The church's business is not about saving souls. The church's business is about changing lives to being little Christ to begin to reveal Jesus. Let me show you how Jesus can be revealed through you. Amen. The devil comes to Jesus and says to Jesus, since you're the son of God, that's actually what it literally says, since you're the son of God, Turn that stone into bread. And Jesus says, man does not live on bread alone, but but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So you see, Jesus makes it clear that his food is to do the will of God. Amen? It's the voice of God in his life. That word, their word, is the word rhema. It means literally this. Man does not live on bread alone, but from his living communion with the living voice. Your life is found in his voice. Amen? Why do I read the Bible? So I can be more theologically intelligent. I brought the Young's Analytical Concordance. Because it looked better on my shelf in my office. When I got my doctorate in practical ministry, I grew a beard. Because doctors have beards. <laughs> the only time I use the word, the, the title doctor, is when we book into hotels because it seems to highlight or make it more likely that we get upgrades. And it works. <laughs> but you have this dynamic that it's not in your title. It's not in what you've got. It's not in your qualifications or your lack of qualifications. It's not in how high you stand or how short you stand, whether you're male, whether you're female. It doesn't even seem to matter whether you're human because God used a donkey. All God needs is for you to be available. So it would be fair to say any ass will do. That would be a good book title, wouldn't it? <laughs> but you have this dynamic that Jesus makes this statement in John 20, 21. He says, peace to you. I don't give as the world gives. But as the Father sends me, now I'm sending you. In other words, the same manner, the same way that Jesus was sent is the same manner and way that you've been sent. Then earlier on in John, it says this, the one who the Father sends speaks the words of the Father because God gives his spirit without limit. That word, their word, is rhema again. So the one who God sends brings God's voice. Later in John, John, John said, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Say, my sheep hear my voice. So it is an illegal statement for you to say, I don't hear God. It's illegal. This is what you should say. Lord, how are you talking to me today? Not Lord, are you talking to me today? That word there, um, 
word or hear his voice, sorry. What it literally, we get the word phone from it. If you look at the definitions of it, it literally means language. Language is bigger than voice. It opens up a whole ocean of things. When I was on my way out of our church, we were working with the Anglican church, and this dear lady, just as I'm walking out the door, she stops as I'm walking out the door, and she, she goes, oh, I wish I heard God like you hear God. And while she's talking to me, the Lord says to me, ask her if she just finds herself just randomly giving gifts to people and that it really impacts them. And I said to her, I said, do you find that you just get an urge that you'll just get up and you feel like you need to give somebody a gift? It just happens. And she goes, yeah, I do that all the time. I said, do you find that when you give the gift, they just go, I really needed that today. And she went, yes. And the Lord says to me, the way I speak through her is through random acts of kindness. See, we've boxed God when it comes to his voice into the box that says, if God's going to speak, it's going to be in the form of a Terminator (laughs) and definitely in King James. (laughs) And it just goes into this realm... And you see it happen in the worship that this person will normally go, hi, 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 John, how are you doing? You all right? You all right? How are you doing? And then they go into prophecy. The Lord would say. I mean, what happened there? <laughs> but you see the walk changes. And if they're really spiritual, they now have scary eyes. <laughs> and their eyes open widely. And there maybe be a little bit of this. But how about we recognize that God's voice in you is God's voice in you? Do you know that God likes you? That's a prophecy some of you need. Amen. Oh, we know he likes you. (laughs) And clearly it was it Cindy. Apparently in this church, Cindy is the answer to everything. I mean, there should be a little thing that comes up here. Oh, bow down to Cindy, the all-knowing one. (laughs) I have decided to follow Cindy. (laughs) But the thing of it is, is this, is God doesn't want the, 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 the Borg from Star Trek in the church. You will be assimilated and added to our uniqueness. We will now worship. Hallelujah. We will now sit down. You will now be spontaneous. If you wish to be spontaneous, this is your moment. It starts exactly in five seconds. Be spontaneous now. Okay, stop. That's about as spontaneous as a sock. The church that we worked in in Teesside, they, um, they moved a table. It was massive controversy. They've moved the table! <laughs> how about you just recognize, I mean, how about you just ask the question, how is God's voice unique in me? How does God love people through me uniquely? How can I be God's voice in this situation? How can I be God's voice in my workplace when I'm walking down the street? I mean, if you do this at the bus stop, I'm going to be God's voice. They'll be gone when you open their eyes like, what is this weird person doing? But the thing about it is, even though I am the reluctant prophet, what I've found is, is I have never yet, ever, ever had somebody, if I say to them, I always struggle what to say. I mean, do I say, I'm a man of God. I'm a prophet. I mean, what do you say? I've kind of landed in the place where I go, I'm I'm a minister and God tells me stuff about people. Do you want to know what he says about you? Never had him say no. And without exception, every single time, 
there's been a door or there's been something open and the life has been changed. Sometimes it's just simply not even in the form of a prophecy. We were at the Chinese restaurant last night and they did a good job. So when the girl came to the till, we just said to her, you've got a beautiful spirit. Thank you so much. Why not? When we were in the United States this time, we were at the, um, I go to these meetings because I get big badges. The Global Prophetic Consultation. You just feel posh. And sometimes there's free food, which is also good. <laughs> but we all, there's like prophets, you probably know most of, a lot of them, prophets from all over the world, and we all went out for a meal. And we're all sitting at the table, we're having a meal, and this dear lady who'd been serving us, she comes up to the table, one of the prophets at the end of the room, at the end of the table, she says, have you ever received a prophetic word? And she goes, I don't even know what a prophetic word is. So would you like to know what God thinks about you? This is in the restaurant. And she goes, yes. So she sits down, and there's 20 prophets at this table, and systematically <laughs> each one went and prophesied to her. And I, I go up to her, and, and, I, and, uh, and I give her a word. I then turn around, and I go to walk away. And while I'm walking away, the Lord says to me, go back and give that girl $100. So there's already somebody else that's with this young lass. And, began, and prophesying over. So I've got so far down the table. So I turn back and I walk up and I say, I'm sorry, I need to give this to you because the Lord's breaking the spirit of poverty off of your life. What I didn't know was that before I got to her, the very words that the lady had just finished in prophesying was God's breaking the spirit of, prophecy, of poverty off of your life. And the next thing that happened in that moment was I gave her $100. I mean, don't you want some stories like that? Do you know why you don't have them? Or why some of you don't have them? Because you've not tried. And the worst thing that will happen, this is the worst thing. You may find that really grumpy person. That's always entertaining. I tried to give somebody a tract in Crimea and they smacked me round the head. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. That might happen. But the vast majority, now some of you are like, oh, I want to be smacked around the head, stuff that. I shouldn't have told that story, should I? But, 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 you know, you just go and you just share the word and you bless somebody. And, and they, at the very least, discover that somebody cares. If you pray for somebody that's sick and they don't get healed, as long as you pray for them the right way, they will leave the experience with Wow, that person really cared. It's interesting that when the leper came to Jesus, he said, if you're willing, you can make me whole. And Jesus reached out and he, he just touched him. That's what the world needs. The world needs to experience the touch of heaven. And the touch of heaven is in your fingers, in your feet, in your hands. And you can do more than you think you can do. And if God can take me, the reluctant prophet, who the first time he preached had to put his hands in his pockets because he was shaking and it looked like I'd brought my ferret with me to preach. <laughs> first time I preached in Ukraine when the presence of God fell the pastor falls on his face and starts repenting and crying and everything inside of me was going I'm really sorry I didn't mean to make you cry <laughs> but you see the thing of it is is your field of influence your world is created for you to reveal Jesus in it who you're called to be and you're coming to this moment today of the end of your 21 day fast I did a 40 day fast once and the only thing I did, drank was strawberry milkshake I was 18 19 probably and, uh, when I finished the fast the Lord said to me um, 
You've just fasted 40 days for me to give you what you've already got. And I said to him, well, Lord, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> and the Lord responded and said, because it was really funny watching. <laughs> <laughs> He's funnier than you think he is, you know. I was with a dear lady who was the, um, she was the PA for a very, very famous minister who's gone to be with Jesus now. I'm so jealous of her relationship with the Holy Spirit. She smiled that much that she had massive cheeks because she just grinned all the time. And she says, when I finish my day, every day I say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what was funny about this day? And she says, then I laugh for the next 45 minutes because he tells me. How about we just begin to recognize that God is the happiest person in existence? The Holy Spirit is the... We're told that God laughs in heaven, that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy, and Jesus was exalted above his companions through the oil of gladness. And then the church is full of misery guts who like this. <laughs> How is that possible? He loves you. He's happy with you. He delights in you. He loves every, every time you take a little chance. I mean, we know how to sell it. When, when babies, your baby takes one step, falls over, you're on the phone. The baby's just walked. It's a one step and fell. Actually, they fell in one particular direction. And you celebrate the most random stuff. He did a poo. Yes, he's done a poo. This is the most awesome thing that has ever happened. Mom, the baby, dinner poo. <laughs> How about we just begin to celebrate our mess? How about we create a culture in the church that's not built on success, but it's simply built on the adventure of following God? How about we get to the place that somebody can say, I went to this person, I gave them a prophetic word, and it was wrong. And everybody goes, yay! And you go, why are you celebrating? Because at least you went. I tried to start a song in the key of F sharp, which apparently I do a lot. And I was the only one in the room who could sing. And then I realized as we were going through the song, that there was a point of utter disaster. <laughs> that it was not going to happen. So you strategically shift the moment. You go, now let's pray. <laughs> but let's enjoy church. Let's enjoy God. Let's enjoy celebrating Jesus. I got some of our guys. I'm nearly done. How am I doing for time? Okay. So, so we get our guys and it's like, we're just going to. We're going to adventure. We're going to just allow God to speak through us. And, 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 and God uses allegories and pictures sometimes. So if you understand that, then you can interact with him on that level. So we got two people. I got them to stand back to back. And they're standing back to back. And this lady, she said, um, she says, I just see an animal. And what I see is a donkey. The person behind her was her mom. She didn't know. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, where is this going to go? And then she proceeds to speak and she says, because the Lord's saying, you just work so hard and you're constantly working. And her mom starts crying and weeping in this moment. I mean, how random is that? We're going to take communion. Hidden in communion is something really beautiful. Jesus said, my bread is to do is his voice, that man doesn't live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from his mouth. The disciples say to Jesus, eat. And Jesus says, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me. Then he says to the disciples, this then is how you should pray. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. What if part of that daily bread is that every day there's something of God's voice 
God wants you to take to the world. What if we've just taken that prayer to mean he wants to meet our needs? But what if actually what he's really saying to us is, this day, give me the bread of your voice in the world where I live. Do you want to stand up? It's a great cartoon that came out years ago about ants. And there's a bit in the film where they say, be the ball. And all the ants make the ball. And then they break the wall down. One ant wouldn't have done it. But all the ants joined together, creating a cutting edge, could break down things that one ant couldn't. What would this church look like if each one of you left today sent? Sent carrying his voice. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for your voice. We thank you for the beauty of who you are. We thank you, you love us and you enjoy us. We thank you, Father, that when we take bread, we partake of you. When we take the wine, we partake of you. And Lord, we pray over this time that you would just remind us what it's all about in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Do you want to lead the community? Bless you guys. Wow. And, and let's show our appreciation everybody. to the breakers as well for being with us today. Journey. Thank you for joining us through the service. And yeah. what an amazing service we had. We're joined back in the studio by Kevin and Lynn. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, what do you think of the service? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Isn't it? Brilliant. Really good. Cool. I told really you guys good. it would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's so did. funny, isn't he? He is. So People funny. were cracking up the whole entire time. Yeah. Yeah, so good. And I know we have some engagements today. Yeah, we do. Thank you, everyone, for yeah. talking yes. to us. Yeah. So we're just going to shout out a few people, yeah. say hi. I think yeah. one of the good things is the um, America. Yeah. Yes. Philippines. Yes. Philippines. And yeah. then all across England. the England. Yeah. United yeah. Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw some. And what's the time in America now? Because time zones oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. It must, it was, was it it's Texas? It's got to be though, early yeah. hours of the morning. Yeah. 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 So yeah. thank yeah. you for so joining yeah, us. Lovely. Honestly, it's awesome. Yeah. And any takeaways from today's service? I know there I was just, a I think lot. it was all really, really good. But yeah. the bit that really touched me when he was talking about that person that was so close to taking their own life yeah I felt like I mean I just found myself welling up as soon as he mentioned it and then he said and yet when he spoke to them they, they, it was like their last ditch wasn't exactly, it and they went yeah. to the church and I think wow and it just shows you doesn't it you just don't know what going on and with that it touched and me as well because I was thinking what what if that person wasn't obedient to go yes. and speak to someone you know how sometimes you That's do feel it. that urge like go give them a hug yeah. go say hi and yeah. then you don't you never yeah. know so I no, think it's just don't. a call for us to be obedient as well and just trust Definitely. God, keep going with the flow. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. about who are you, Kevin? No, really I think that's, that, that's the bit I think came over really well, that God is fun, but also mm. that, yes. God, that God is real. Yeah. And yeah. you don't have to put on... I thought it was funny when he was doing the impersonations of... Christmas oh, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> the robot sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. Robot yeah. Thing yeah. yeah. You know, God is... Really, you know, God is real. Yeah, and personal. And, and personal. That's right. And yeah. actually, we, the, you know, all of us hear God. We just got to be attained to it. I will confess. Sometimes when I when I say, "Did I hear God?" I'm a bit like, "Was it God?" Because sometimes I'm expecting Him to say, "Thou shalt not." I you know. know. <laughs> Hello, Leanne. <laughs> But when he said it's just, it's natural, it's just yeah. God speaks to us differently. Yeah. I was like, okay. Mm. Of course, I'll you've got to add a bit of lightning in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Because sometimes it can just be a thought that yeah. pops into your head. Absolutely. And I think, you know, like he was saying earlier, we just, we just go for it. Even if you, even if you get it wrong. It's okay to It's mess okay. Up. Because, you know, we're only human. Yeah. But the more we do it, the more we'll get know, get to know God. Oh, that's definitely God, you know. Definitely. So yeah. Now going into this week, I think I'm really going with that mindset. Like God, what are you saying? 
Well, let me hear it and let me do what you're saying. Too right. Yeah. Yes. Before we close, I'll quickly ask you guys, like, what would, because we've been talking about community and love, what would you say to someone who's like, I don't need to go to church, Jesus is in my house? What would you say about community? Well, they're not, they think if they're going to be at home, yeah. then they're on their own at home. Yeah. And they're not actually getting that fellowship. Yeah. And the fellowship is, I mean, there's nothing better than collective worship. Yeah. So and true. also praying together. I mean, it's just, you know, yeah. I mean, obviously when they're online, yeah. Um, we do feel like that's, that's the a community, community yes. anyway. When we know and you're there, that's, that's right. The and people can't always get to church yes. physically, and we do understand yeah. that. And that's why it's so uh, good to have the online. And, and that, that's interesting because actually we are doing community on here. Yeah. Yeah. That's and right. It's really good. Exactly. Mm. But you know, our God isn't a God of isolation. Yeah. So if you say, "Oh, yeah. I'm just going to do it at home on my own," yes. It doesn't really fit in the theme of, what of God, who God is. Of who God is, because yeah. God is one of three. He, you know, it's the, the Trinity. Yeah, he's and already. He's, he's got a community yeah. mm-hmm. mindset. He wants us to have that. Yeah, let's and think of right. it that yes. way. Yes. And even though if you're online, like we keep saying, it's an yeah. online community. Yeah. It's not isolation. So we are That's so right. grateful. You've been speaking to us, yeah. online pastors. Yeah. Thank you for coming in. Oh, well, thank you. Always for love to good, have you. And as we are about to wrap this up, I hope you're all blessed. And remember, we have our online Zoom prayers mm-hmm. on Tuesday at seven in the morning. The link is on Facebook. You can just look up CT Life on Facebook, or you can tell us in the chat right now. Hey, where's the link? And we'll give it to you. So we're looking forward to seeing you in the coming week. Stay blessed. Until next time. Goodbye. <laughs>